What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Redditor Aviation. Hope you guys have a fantastic day today and today we have an aviation news video for you guys today. Today we have a very exciting topic that I definitely wanted to talk about. Today we're going to be talking about Alaska Airlines joining the One World Alliance the other day. So I really hope you guys are excited for today's video. Very, very excited to talk about this. Um, as I'm sure you guys may know, I also did this with the JetBlue A22300 um, debut, if you will, of the pitchers. Um, I like to do these aviation news videos every once in a while, and um, I was really pumped to see this, especially the uh, One World uh, livery on an Alaska aircraft. So I definitely wanted to talk about this. So today we're going to be jumping into a, a couple articles, I should say, about the topic, and we're going to be talking about Alaska Airlines joining the One World Alliance. So I hope you guys are excited, and let's dive in, shall we? Official, Alaska joins One World with no interest in wide body. So we'll be reading through a couple articles here, looking at a couple of uh, pictures. We have a video, I think it's some good things. So yeah, let's take a look. This one is by Jay Saint, I guess, um, seeing with the H. So here we go. Alaska Airlines has officially joined the One World Alliance, an array of exclu or exclusive, yeah, exclusives, I think, from the Alaska and other One World members were optimistic about the prospects of what Alaska entrance into the alliance could bring. They are the 14th member, by the way. At a question and answer session after the announcement that Alaska is officially a member of the One World Alliance, newly minted CEO Ben Minishu, I think, squashed any hope for Alaska t uh, taking wide bodies in the near future. Very interesting to hear that, obviously, now that they're in an alliance, this is kind of like the next step for Alaska, if you will. Uh, a lot of people think that they should expand, and obviously, as you can tell from Ben, they are not interested at the current time, which is really crazy. Here it is, guys. Alaska Airlines has officially became a member of the One World Alliance, and here's a photo directly from them of their first aircraft painted in their the One World livery. Because if you're in the One World, I think in any alliance of the big three, you must have uh, some aircraft in uh, the one, that alliance's livery, I should say. Here it is, everybody. Here is the Alaska 737-900ER in the One World livery. This is November 487 Alpha Sierra. And as you can tell, here is the debut. So what do we have? Uh, not too big of a surprise, but I'm really, really glad to see it. We have. Um, pretty much everything is the same uh, compared to normal Alaska livery, but instead the big billboard titles, you have member of one world put on there and then Alaska in gray underneath. I know a lot of people have mixed opinions about it, but I think it looks super sharp. They did a fantastic job designing it. I feel like the touch of gray down here really adds a lot. Uh, keeping the gray underbelly was an interesting choice, but Chester's never looked better. I personally love it. I think it looks fantastic. GJ, NG, calling your names for a model here. Skymarks, any of you guys. Um, this is beautiful. You can't say anything more about this. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about uh, what the predictions are for uh, future aircraft, but just overall this picture, absolutely phenomenal. Alaska Airlines is officially a member of the One World. Alaska Airlines, based in Seattle, is an official member of the One World Alliance. Joining the alliance today, the airline is the 14th full member of One World. CEO Ben Minishu stated that the following on joining the alliance at a special webcast event commemorating the milestone. This is a game changer. Airlines have provided pivotal moments in their history. Decisions are made for the future success and stability and to provide increased services and better travel experience for our guests. For Alaska Airlines, One World is one of those pivotal moments. I would highly agree with that statement right there. As international travel begins to recover, securing our place in One World puts us in a much stronger position to grow and compete in the years ahead. This truly opens the world uh, to our loyal Alaska guest. The possibilities are tremendously and fun to think about. And here's another picture of that 730, or just a random 737 that looks like this 919. At least it looks like it, but uh, I can't really tell. And you have a One World big sticker held up. Actually, yeah, this is a Max, okay. Uh, you can tell by the shadow. So yeah, um, ultimately, um, very, very exciting, as uh, I'm sure you guys know. Um, <clears throat> couple of key things that uh, definitely helped Alaska make this move. Uh, their partnership with American Airlines is huge. Um, they can, you can do all kinds of stuff. For example, you can get on either of their websites and book flights through each other's websites. So for example, if I went on the AlaskaAirlines.com website, if I wanted to go to or Tulsa, for example, you can take a flight from Seattle to Dallas and then on American from Dallas to Tulsa and vice versa, kind of that sort of thing. So that already was really helping and that connection that they already had with American Airlines was very pivotal. 
And to top that all off, um, obviously the Virgin America merger back about five years ago now, that's crazy, but it's been about five years. Uh, it definitely helped them uh, increase their um, service. Uh, they added a lot of uh, flights, uh, mainly that uh, San Francisco and LA realm, but they continued to expand on that on their own behalf. So I feel like that was definitely a great move. The first time Alaska has joined an alliance in its 89 year history, they are almost 100 years old, the airline announced the, uh, the intention to join One World in February of 2020. In July, the airline received its formal invitation and stunningly, only eight months later, is now the carrier is now a member of One World. That's a very quick turnaround between all the licensing, all the paperwork and all the agreements. That's very quick. And during a global pandemic, keep in mind, very impressive. This is one of three aircraft in Alaska's fleet that will sport the One World livery has been revealed. It's a Boeing 737-900ER that will soon be flying across the Alaska network. The airline also debuted its up, update uh, to its safety dance to be the One World theme. So uh, I'm assuming that's their safety video. Um, and we'll actually take a look at that here in a second. Now, uh, obviously it mentions one of three. Um, American Airlines has I think five, um, as of right now, they have the three 737s, that's 837, 838, and 919. And then they also have uh, two 777-200ERs, uh, 791 and 796. They did have a 767-300. Um, they had old liveries as well. I'm just going over the 2013 livery. Uh, 2013 livery, they also had a 767. I believe that was 39, uh, was it 343, I think was the One World Aircraft. And then they also had a 757-200. Uh, I want to say that was 174. Um, and no 787s or 330s or anything. I believe those are the only aircraft. Um, a little surprising, but I'll kind of talk about my logic here. Um, so, obviously, Alaska, one out of three for now, which is uh, quite a statement, uh, obviously, for Alaska. So here are my predictions for what they're going to do on the other two aircraft. It could be a variety of things, but I'm going to take some logical assumptions. I think that one will be a 737-800 because that is one of their most dominant fleet types and, or fl aircraft, I should say. Um, obviously, they have quite a few of them, like I said, and just makes sense for it to be um, right over there on 737-800. They may do another 737-900. I would not be surprised by that, but I see 737-800. And then the third aircraft, there's a couple of things that I could see here. I do not believe that's going to be any of the Airbus aircraft because uh, Alaska has such an emphasis on Boeing aircraft. Uh, they integrated all those uh, Airbus aircraft due to Virgin America, and uh, the majority of them will be gone pretty soon. They already got three of the 319s. Uh, 320s are next up here in the next few years, and then 321 Neos will be their only lingering aircraft unless they decide to sell them or something. I would say, if anything, there's really slim possibility of a 321 Neo, but I highly doubt it. Um, so that would be my assumption on that. Now, here's what I think is more likely for the third aircraft. Two options. The one that I think is more likely, and this may surprise some of you guys, but I really feel like this is a real possibility, a Horizon 175, a, uh, a Horizon Air, I should say, Ember Air J-175, and I'll tell you why. So when it comes to regional jets, obviously you don't see many special liveries. You see the house delivery of the subsidiary and that's typically it. However, there are a couple exceptions to that rule. Wholly owned subsidiaries. Now let me talk about wholly owned subsidiaries. A wholly owned subsidiary is a subsidiary owned by the air or by one airline, I should say. So for example, when you have a wholly owned or wholly owned subsidiary, the airline owns it, like I said. So in this case, um, I'll just bring out a couple examples. American Airlines has a few wholly owned subsidiaries, Piedmont Airlines, Envoy Air, and PSA Airlines. Now, if you know those three, you probably already are clicking that the only um, airline that those subsidiaries fly for is American Airlines. And Alaska does have a wholly owned subsidiary in Horizon Air. Now, what's interesting is most of the time, these wholly owned subsidiaries do not do special liveries on their aircraft. But uh, due to all these other subsidiaries, um, what my point is, is when you have a big subsidiary that has multiple contracts with multiple airlines, they typically will not do special deliveries whatsoever because it's just a lot to keep up with. And uh, if the aircraft, uh, they're getting changed so frequently, it does make sense. But when you have a wholly owned subsidiary, it's a little different because all your aircraft are kind of intertwined in one network, if you will. So that leads us to Horizon Air, which if you don't know is a wholly owned subsidiary of Alaska Airlines. So therefore they kind of have a lot of legal room if they want to do special deliveries. And we've seen that from Horizon Air. Um, all the, uh, 
all the uh, Q400s they have, all those special liveries, those are all Horizon errors. Uh, Alaska also has uh, one Ember 175s for SkyWest, but they would not do a special livery on the SkyWest aircraft, to my knowledge. I don't think that would be uh, foreseeably possible. And they also have Ember Ear J-175s. If you don't know, the uh, there's an Alaska Ember Ear J-175 operated by Horizon Air in the Honoring Those Who Serve livery. I have that model. Since Alaska is a wholly owned subsidiary, they can pretty much make whatever special livery they want. So that's why I feel like they will do a One World livery on a 175 potentially. I'm a little surprised that Envoy has not done that with American Airlines being a wholly owned subsidiary uh, on a 175. A little surprising, but maybe we'll see that down the line. But I feel like that's the most likely option with their Horizon Air's history of doing special deliveries on aircraft is potentially uh, a 175 special delivery. And then finally, maybe a 737 MAX 9. I would not see that being out of the realms of possibilities, but I think it's gonna be a 739, a 738, and a uh, Horizon Air 175. So yeah, sorry for that spill, but I thought you guys would find my logic interesting. Okay, and we will take a quick glance here at the video. Um, we're just gonna glance at it, I'll just commentate it. Uh, if you wanna watch the audio, the link to these articles will be in the description. Um, so yeah, there's 738, and there's the One World banner. Um, looking sharp right there. So yeah, um, I like that they got the uh, COVID precautions going here. Uh, definitely smart. Uh, kind of interesting how they have some there, some not. I guess the, all the scenes are in the aircraft they got it on there. That's my uh, guess on that. Ooh, okay. Uh, I got some interesting stuff throughout here. Um, ultimately, um, I don't think it's too fast moving, but um, maybe a little bit more variety in terms of uh, this dance. Well, I mean, it is dance theme, so fair enough. Yeah, this isn't bad. Um, I like how they have different airlines. That's awesome. Qatar, JAL. Of course, um, Fiji. Um, yeah, this is looking good. Iberia, and there we go. Okay, that was, that's not bad. We can work with that. Okay, next up, no wide bodies for now. Mr. Missy uh, is certainly excited and believes that there's plenty of potential for Alaska within the One World Alliance, but the airline is not upending, upending pardon me, its fleet and strategy as an alliance member. He says, uh, particularly, I can't say specifically, sorry. He particularly stated, I'll just say it that way. The caliber of these one world airlines is second to none. And so right now we are very comfortable with where we are in terms of our domestic construction or construct, I should say. And with our partner in one world, partnership in one world. So right now we have, so, so. Right now, we have no plans for wide bodies. I think our first and foremost focus is to get out of this pandemic, get the financial stable footing, and get one world to fire on all cylinders, which I agree with. Um, I don't think Alaska is right now in a position. Um, and really, to be quite honest with you, um, between, uh, or I should say, with uh, their uh, partnership with American Airlines, I don't think that international travel for right now is necessary because obviously, number one, we're in a pandemic. And number two, American Airlines has lots of options for those guys. So that's my opinion on that. Let me know what yours is in the comment section. Alaska has doubled down on making back or on moving back towards being close to an all Boeing mainline carrier. The airline has char or, yeah, charted out the accelerator Airbus A320 retirement like I was just talking about with plans to fly more 737 MAX jets. The carrier firms up an order with, with for more MAX jets announced December on, uh, in December, just on Tuesday. So yeah, here's a picture of 737 MAX. Alaska's joining one world gives it plenty of access to international long haul destinations as a major West Coast carrier connects passengers on the fellow one world airlines out of its hubs in Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. And that's what I was just saying. Um, interesting they didn't add Portland to that. Uh, or, oh, I think he's talking about uh, international flights. Uh, I think that's his um, purpose. But uh, yeah, that's what I was just touching on is they have plenty of options. And then uh, of course, British Airways flies to Seattle, San Francisco. Um, and then you have um, Qatar just started service to Seattle and all those guys. And I'm sure with Alaska being a one world member, they may draw more attention to some airlines like um, this may be pushing it, but like Finnair or maybe even Fiji into Seattle or Portland or any of those. So that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Alaska's position in One World. Alaska Airlines is positioning itself as a leading West Coast carrier within the One World Alliance. The airline's hubs include Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, and Anchorage because they're large establishments. So yeah, I think they were talking about international flights on that last paragraph. Especially out of Seattle and Los Angeles, Alaska can provide its customers and 
customers and the customers of other One World Airlines access to a host of new destinations across the Pacific Northwest and more to fly out of major U.S. cities. Alaska has now gained seven new airline partners and the One World Global Alliance stretches to now nearly 1,000 destinations in over 170 territories. So yeah, this is awesome for Alaska. Um, really unique because obviously you don't have a ton of small airlines um, that are in One World. Uh, main examples is, I, I hate to say it, but I do not know who this one is. So if somebody would tell me who that one is, I would appreciate it. Of course, you got American. Uh, Iberia, British, Finnair, all big time. Royal Canadian, uh, Qatar. Um, I remember seeing this in uh, AS's updates. I think it's Kishan Airlines. I think they're more domestic. I believe S7 Airlines is as well. Cathay Pacific, obviously, Long Haul, Malaysia, Qantas, Fiji, and Japan. So that kind of adds that uh, North America branch of a smaller airline to fly those particular flights because American does not have a big enough Northwest establishment to uh, fly into all those regional cities, but they do have quite a good coast on the uh, Northeast. So really just between American and Alaska, that really just puts on the, um, the uh, North American a really good state, or at least the United States, if you will. One thing that is interesting to me is there's no carriers in the one world from South America. Um, I don't, I think Latam's and Sky Team maybe, uh, I could be wrong on that, but I thought that Latam may fit well, but I mean, there's just some stuff like that, but here's kind of the full map now. As members of the Alliance, expect Alaska Airlines to deepen its partnership with other carriers within the Alliance that serves Alaska hubs. It is also very possible that airlines come out of this crisis. Uh, Seattle could get new and returning service from one world carriers, which I was just touching on who could co-share with Alaska and selling connecting tickets, bringing more travel options for many. American Airlines has already announced it's, uh, it is bringing a uh, wide body long haul service to Seattle. The airline just inaugurated flights from Seattle to London and has plans to add flights to Shanghai and Bangalore before the end, later this year. I did not know about Shanghai, so that's awesome. That will do well, I think. With partners that can fly internationally, Alaska does not need wide bodies. While this industry or industry has learned to never say never, it would be pretty optimistic shift. I think that means um, dramatic shift for Alaska to fly wide bodies, which its CEO predicts that will not be in the near future. Are you glad that Alaska has joined the One World Alliance? Do you want Alaska to fly wide bodies? Let us know in the comments. And here are the comments if you guys would like to go read those. Yeah, Alaska getting into One World, guys. This is huge. Um, just look at this. Look at this. I mean, you can't get any better than that. Chester is a freaking unit, and it really does not get any better than that. I'm super excited to see what Alaska is going to do in the One World, and it's going to be very, very exciting. So thank you, Simply Flying, for another awesome article. Fantastic job by my guys, and they continue to provide us with fantastic aviation news. Uh, I do have another uh, article here that I would like to go over from Aero News because they have some more pictures along with a video. So I'm not going to read over everything because it's pretty much uh, kind of the same context. I didn't look at it, but I'm going to take a guess that it is. We got the picture again. And then here is uh, a video that uh, One World posted to their YouTube. Oh, it's uh, 15 minutes. Okay, well, I'll just skim through it and see if they're... Okay, it's just a guy talking or just a couple guys talking. Okay, never mind. My bad. We're not going to spend 15 minutes on that. Uh, and then this one... Um, I think it's just a welcoming video pretty much, but uh, yeah, just very exciting. I'll leave all these links in the description. But what I was interested in, uh, it's a couple more videos here. There's that safety dance video. Uh, there's another One World video. This is what I was interested in right here. So here's a variety of pictures of that uh, 737. Oh, do I need to click on the, uh, this? Oh, it's on Facebook. Okay, we need to go there. There it is, okay. Sorry about this. Um, looks like they have quite a few bit of stuff on here there or mm, there we go okay alrighty so here's our first picture of a close-up uh Bradley Oil blowing remains uh this is etops aircraft so that's awesome it's just out in Roswell maybe you got a 727 back there uh so this is probably out there in Roswell or something uh that is sharp man looking awesome here's a closer up titles uh that's a very light gray but looking really sharp um yeah, I believe American may be the only carrier in the one world with a non Euro white one world aircraft i could be wrong on that but at least what i know like finnair british airways qantas japan all those guys they're all white so qantas you know everybody to my knowledge at least at least the majority of them i should say so yeah um here's another picture that's the uh a similar outlook however this is a, a another normal 737 900 so i don't know why they have two of them but very cool 
Here's another angle of that One World um, with the lighter Alaska titles once again. Uh, really looks nice like we were talking about. Here's a picture inside the paint, uh, paint shop. Uh, I always really enjoy watching these time lapses of how they make these aircraft, uh, paint them up and everything. It's a bunch of fun. And here's another picture of it getting into delivery. And then there we go. Alrighty, guys. So I think that will conclude today's video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry it was a little longer. Never mind attention, but yeah. So yeah, guys, like I said, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know in the comment section what your thoughts on Alaska Airlines joining the One World Alliance is. And I personally think they're going to turn, um, really going to help out, especially American, but everybody else. Going to be a huge factor, and I'm super, super glad to see such a small carrier in terms of getting an alliance, or in terms of an alliance airline getting into alliance. Uh, they really deserve this. They worked super, super hard to get to where they are today. And I'm super, super excited to see what the future holds with Alaska. But yeah, like I said, that will do it for today's video. Everybody, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy, guys. Stay safe. Trust the process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Red River Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys soon as Red River Aviation is signing off.